guys. This is the video for phases of matter. Any second now, there we go. Um, we are still in unit one, properties of matter. Again, this is just a basic unit, but this time we're going to be looking at um, the phases of matter. And I'm sure technically you are already aware of this material, but I have some new things to kind of add and bring in, and then just some really interesting examples. So for this unit we're going to be focused, or for this video we're going to be focusing on just the four phases of matter and primarily the first three, but I do want to talk about plasma because it's interesting. So remember matter is um, anything that takes up space and has mass and we've already spent a little bit of time talking about the scientific method and remember that scientific method starts with an observation. So the first thing we can do is really make an observation about the matter or the thing that we are focusing on. So let's look at the matter, there it goes, um, the phases of matter. Now technically guys, um, matter is uh, really going to exist for us in three main phases and that is solid, liquid, and gas. So here I have a video, uh, excuse me, that's not a video, an um, image of a glacier floating in the ocean um, above with the air above. And so we have the solid glacier where the particles are heavily tightly packed, um, the liquid water that is, uh, you know, slow moving molecules, and then the water vapor that is floating above the, um, above the scene, you know, so those particles are far apart and fast moving. Now there is a fourth phase of matter and for the most part this semester we're not going to be dealing with plasma, but it is, um, it does exist. Plasma is, um, this phase of matter where you have, you know, really densely um, packed, usually high temperature, usually charged gas molecules. And it ends up having um, properties of both a liquid and a gas. Um, you see plasma in the um, the center of stars, um, in like the, the light up signs and so on. No, go away. Sorry guys. Um, and so plasma is um, kind of a combination of liquid gas. Okay, so in terms of uh, phases of matter, you can have a solid. Solids generally have a structure. They have a fixed shape, fixed volume. You notice that this is in an Erlenmeyer flask. It's not taking up the shape of the flask. It's sitting in its cube structure, kind of like a cube of sugar. Um, a liquid, on the other hand, is going to take the shape of the container. It's not taking up the entire volume, just the shape. And so you could take this liquid and pour it into a cup, into a graduated cylinder, into, um, you know, a vase. It's just going to take the shape of that container. Um, it has a fixed volume, though. A gas, on the other hand, um, will take the shape and volume of any container it's in. It's really um, a, a variable type of phase. Now here we go again with that microscopic versus macroscopic. Why do we care about um, those rigid molecules that are in a solid? And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, there we go. Play. Yes it does. Mm -hmm. Let's pause this for a second. Okay, so I'm not sure why the other link is not working. It was working a couple of weeks ago, but whatever. Um, the idea from that video was just, guys, that solid particles are very closely packed and you really don't get movement um, from one, well, you around. can't take this particle all the way over a here. Solid will change um, instead, they are going forced. to be instance, um, relatively rigid. And so with that in mind, um, as you're thinking about a solid, uh, the more macroscopic example I can give you is of this. Um, this is of a Japanese subway at rush hour. I've had a few um, exchange students from near Tokyo and they said this is uh, pretty accurate actually. And so as we think about these solid particles that, have, that are very rigid, that don't really move 
as much. Um, consider the people on the subway. They too are going to be incredibly tightly packed. There's not going to be much movement here. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, they're going to be lucky if they do get to vibrate the way molecules in a solid would, or in this case, you know, breathe. And so just kind of watch as they go by. You'll see the people stuck against the, um, the windows, and then just, you know, enjoy your car or, you know, vehicle or bus ride as you go home today um, as being, you know, the spacious and hugely American thing that it is. And so you can kind of see, come on, see that. Okay, so you can generally see like this guy, let's see, right here, his coat is even stuck to the window because of the person next to him. And so they are, that is a macroscopic example of a solid. And you can think about the table or the, you know, desk you're using right now, and that's great. But in general, um, it's kind of hard to uh, see those sometimes, okay? Yeah, close tabs, go away. All right, now, um, if you are noticing in the uh, these videos, I have hyperlinks like right here. The only way to really open them is to be in slideshow mode, or you can right click and say open hyperlink. So just as a recap, a solid is gonna have a definite shape and volume, it has particles that are extremely tightly packed. They cannot move past one another. Um, the only motion or movement that they have is that slight vibration. And because they are so close together, they really can't be compressed. Okay, so in terms of phases of matter, uh, the next phase of matter is a liquid. These are um, going to have a definite volume, but it can take the shape of any container. Um, and so, I wonder if there's just a problem with me copying these over. Um, if you pour it out, it is going to take the shape of its container. Um, again, these particles are very tightly packed. They're just slow moving. And so, um, they also cannot be compressed. Okay, and show, keep, open hyperlink. Sometimes technology just isn't my friend and that's okay. Okay, so the best example I can give you of a macroscopic way of viewing liquid molecules is to think about um, shopping on Black Friday. Comes up like halfway. Here we've got again, very tightly packed particles. Um, they can be oh more than a oh solid. Macroscopic example. Now, again, you know, technically that's not probably the most scientific thing I could offer you, but you know, this is the first unit we're breaking you in, and we haven't really gotten into um, some of those other things yet. Third phase of matter is a vapor. Um, these have a variable volume and a variable shape. The particles are going to be really far apart, especially in comparison to the other two, and they're going to be in rapid and random motion. Kind of think about, you know, toddlers on sugar, um, especially if you can imagine them in like a little gym or a jamboree, you know, a padded room where they're supposed to be running around really fast. Um, that's a gas. 
So how do you st distinguish between the states of matter? Remember that on the test or exam, however you want to think about it, you're going to be given um, a question on something. Now, I don't remember exactly which version of the question I put in your um, homework. Um, but for example, if I ask you in your homework, what are the properties of a solid? you better also understand the properties of a liquid or a gas because you don't know which one I'm going to test you on on the exam. So on the exam I may say the following, what are all of the following except are properties of a gas. And so you would have to know that gases are, um, gas particles are far apart, um, they are fast moving, They take the shape, they have a variable shape and volume. They take the shape and volume of a container. What did I just do? Oops. Um, liquids, on the other hand, these are tightly packed. They cannot be compressed. Um, slow moving. Um, these take the shape but not the volume of the container. Um, and the solid, you know, has a rigid structure, can't be compressed, the particles are very slow moving, um, stuff like that, okay? So just kind of make sure you are comfortable no matter how I ask those questions that you would get them correct. That concludes the video for phases of matter.